I have been getting too many signs to go Umrah. Like, bro, I've been getting dreams I'm going Umrah. I've been, everyone I speak to just somehow brings up Umrah. Like, it's man. This is my Umrah arc. The parents disowning me arc is over. You lot, Salamu alaikum, everybody. You guys will not understand how humble, how grateful I feel right now. I have just been invited to perform Umrah for free. Bro, you do not understand. Like, I've been making dua to Allah. I've been saying, Allah, bring me to Umrah. My soul is yearning for Umrah. I've been having dreams I'm going Umrah. I've been all these signs for me to go Umrah. And I've been making dua like, Allah, please, like, I can't afford it financially right now, etc., etc. Bro, subhanAllah, literally today, at least an hour ago, the company Dome Tours reached out to me. At Dome Tours on Instagram, reached out to me. And they said, Raheem, we want to, we've heard your background. We want to fly you out to Umrah. So I, I don't deserve half of this. Half of the stuff I've gotten, I don't deserve half of it. So, Hen, like, I feel so humbled and grateful. But this doesn't feel real. This doesn't feel real. Rely. Okay, today is uh, August the 16th on a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, isn't it? Wednesday. We just packed up everything. I'm literally going with him. Do you know do you want to say hello? No, not right now. Okay, come <laughs> But basically, yeah. So I got my ihram. Secondary ihram, just in case. My shoes, clothes, sandals. I was, everyone's telling me to get this book here. So I got Fortress of a Muslim. Also, I got the Quran. I'm ready, alhamdulillah. But yeah, um, literally leaving in like 10 minutes. Gonna go to Heathrow Airport, inshallah, to Allah. Gonna meet the group and then, yeah. Gonna go Umrah, inshallah. See you there. Bad day. Oh, I, even, I don't even know what that's here. Yeah. What he said, in the Come on, bro. I don't know what they're doing. Come on, my bro. Please don't. Please fix the train, my bro. The plane. That's it. There. It's okay. Gate 23. Yo, this is gonna be. Bro, we're literally boarding. We're literally boarding in like. How many hours? How many minutes? Like, we're literally, literally bored now. Minutes. 30 minutes. Bro. I literally told my mum I was going to Morocco, so inshallah she's not watching the live live stream of Saudi Arabia or I'm I'm screwed. If you told me three years ago that I would be in Mecca, I would told you to go away. Like bro, it is mad like Tell him to go away. This is gonna be the maddest spiritual journey, inshallah. Probably most excited for eating the McDonald's. Oh, Probably hell, more than oh, actually performing Umrah. And stuff let you lot know. Um, I'm gonna be going to Medina first for like Five days? Five days. Five days, inshallah. inshallah. Gonna learn the Sira. I'll take you lot with me during that. And then the last five days is gonna be going to the big black box, inshallah. I'm hiding in the toilet because there's way too many people and I'm socially awkward. But yeah, the flight, the longest five hours of my life. There's some seven. Bruh. Guy sitting behind me, he's gonna be the first person in my suicide note. I'm gonna get cystic fibrosis. Like, bro, my back is bent. Yeah, got like an hour left. My, my eyes are red, I look high. But yeah, gonna land in literally an hour. So, we just got off. How was that flight? Very, very long. Bro, that flight was long, bro. Oh my gosh. Just landed in Oman. Bro, it's hot, right? Tell him, tell him. Bro, yeah, it's hot, it's bro. about 30 ish degrees. But yeah, bro, it's just gonna be oh, one more flight. Uh, how long is it? Two hours? Two hours. An hour and a half. Another hour and a half flight till we get to. till we get to Saudi Arabia, inshallah. Oh, bro. I don't know what they're feeding these Arabs yet, but bro, this airport is luxurious. Hour and a half to Saudi Arabia, inshallah. One hour and a half left, inshallah. inshallah bro, bro. So what I'm showing you right now is literally Medina and while I was looking at this I couldn't stop thinking to myself SubhanAllah I'm literally where the Prophet used to live the most the best human being on planet earth SubhanAllah Bro. Just landed In the airport and that Sorry. I'm ready to pick up the luggage bro I'm about to pass out Look at my eyes I'm not high I'm just tired How are you feeling? Uh, very very tired. I just want to go home and not home. Yeah, to the hotel. yeah he wants to kill himself, bro. No. Yo, basically, 
Bro, you're not gonna guess what happened here. Yeah? I was at the, uh, the, the 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 visa passport area, bro. How am I hearing some guy being like Jackie Chan, Bruh. the worker, and he starts laughing? That was my first instance of international racial abuse. Oh look, I made it, bro. It is differently hot. Mashallah, beautiful, beautiful. All we've got is what one more forty-five minute journey to that hotel. And then, yeah, and then I'll tell you what we're doing tomorrow. I don't even know what we're doing tomorrow, but yeah. Bro, the Adan is literally going off. Oh, I'm trying to make it. Hey, how long we got left? How long we got left? Bro, it's not the speed of my life. Steady, Joe. Yeah, I'm going to get it. All right, so, yeah, alhamdulillah, we made it on time. Wallahi, when I first saw Masjid Al... How would you pronounce it? Al Nabawi. Bro, I almost cried. Like, Allah has blessed me in so many ways that I don't even believe I deserve. But the hotel we're staying at, what, what's it called again? Uh, Mo Moven Pick. Moven Pick. Anwar Moven Pick. Is it that one? Anwar Moven Pick. Anwar Moven Pick. Next to the Haram. Like, I could. Allah. Allah is the greatest. That's all I've got to say. Warden, time is. 4.20 a.m. How you've disguised in his sleep at all. I got two hours of sleep. We're about to go to um, Fajr Salah and then, yeah, the grave of... Of 1,000, no, 10,000 Muslims. The grave of 10,000 Muslims, inshallah. This is the... What's it? Uh, Masjid Al-Haram. Bro, it's so peaceful, bro. So sad, ya Allah, my bad. So this was probably one of the most eye-opening experiences that I've ever experienced in my life. The tour guide, or the group, sorry, we went to Janatul Baki, and that's the graveyard literally next to Masjid Nabu. And the tour guide, he was just telling us all about this graveyard, like men are buried with one stone on top, Woman I buried with two stones, the Prophet's family was buried here, etc, etc. And then he started to explain the grave and he said how the grave is going to be the second most frightening experience we ever endure, second to the Day of Judgment. And then we saw a man getting buried and we knew it was a man because as they were digging the grave, they put one stone on it, etc. But as I was watching the man getting buried, I couldn't stop thinking to myself like, that man is either going through extreme torment or he's going through the most pleasure of his life. And then I realized, if he is going through torment, he can't repent anymore. He can't do any more good deeds. He can't ask Allah for his forgiveness. This made me realize how blessed I am to be alive because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me more time to repent, more time to increase my rank in Jannah, more time to protect myself from the hellfire, more time to, you know, inc like just. So this is your sign to just pattern up, make sure that what you're doing is halal make sure that what you're doing is pleasing to allah because at the end of the day you can't reverse the torment of the grave once you're dead and you're in the grave that's it no more repenting no more asking allah forgiveness that's it you're dead the time is 10 30. i don't know if you've clocked it but i've gained intense weight because i've just non-stop eating but yeah we're about to go to Juma. this guy's on zero hours of sleep so uh, I've got two. I've got two, hours two hours of sleep he's going to die but yeah, the khutbah is going to be in Arabic, so I'm probably going to read the Quran while he's given that. Bro, I can't bear weight. Okay, alhamdulillah, I don't care. But yeah, see you there, inshallah. The room is so messy. Yo, came to the mosque two hours early. Bro, we've got a seat at the very back. Look, look how busy it is. This guy's tired, bro. We've got um, two more hours to the khutbah. And yeah, try not to die, yeah, please. Alright, we just got, I just got back to the hotel. My back needs spinal reconstruction. I was sitting in some hunchback of Notre Dame position for like two hours. Because we got, we had to get there at 10 because we wanted to pray inside the masjid. And then the khutbah took, and then bro, it was, it was, it was long, it was long, but alhamdulillah, I enjoyed it. But yeah, I didn't record much of it because I was like, listen, 
like i want to actually make do as i want to be sincere in my do as and we not get distracted so yeah we got um i'm probably gonna go to the masjid in a bit because i want to have a nap in there during Dukhar and asr and then we have our road are booked for 6 30 or 7 30 but we need to go to 6 30 to queue up so yeah i'll see you there mike Slowly, my bro. On our way to nice. on our way to do the road up. We're gonna pray Maghrib first in Shahala. Look how many people there are. Yo. Hi guys. Bro, this is our mission to get to the road up. I've just been what time is in it? the eye by Rakim. Uh, what time is it? What time is it? It's 720. 720. We're meant to be there at 7.30. Oh, bro, look at the queue. What the hell? Nah. Oh, everyone's waiting to go louder, inshallah. Inshallah, louder soon. Bro, it's currently 400 degrees. We're waiting to be let into the louder. Oh, let me show you. <coughs> There's a louder right there. All these people waiting. I'm coming to the louder. I don't know. So, this was the louder. This is what the Prophet وسلم, said is a part of Jannah on earth. And this is also where the Prophet وسلم, Abu Bakr and Umar ibn al Khattab is buried. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, this place is like World War Three. Like people are fighting to be at the front, people are doing like pushing, shoving. But then I learned that the Prophet وسلم, said that if you knew the reward of performing worship inside of the Rauda, everyone would fight for a position in there. The craziest thing is, me and my friend Imran, we prayed in the front two rows and Allahu A'lam was told that the front two rows are parts of actual Jannah. So subhanAllah, Allahu Akbar, we prayed, or I prayed, in a part of Jannah. We just prayed on Jannah, in Jannah on earth. SubhanAllah, such and a And next to one of the very important pillars as well. Oh SubhanAllah, Wallahi, we are blessed bro, Alhamdulillah. Day three. Four, I don't even know. Bro, I look so done out. But let me show you lot the breakfast. It is 10-10. We're gonna walk to the Koba today. How long is the walk? Two hours. Yeah, it's gonna be about it's, it's a five kilometer walk. We're gonna go on a tour, inshallah, to Masjid Koba. Inshallah. Uh, also Mount Uhud. Inshallah. Inshallah. And also the museum. Yeah, inshallah. Wait, look at the grab. Hand. I got noodles, some vegetables, and aubergine. This is my favorite. Bro, my phone's like 40 degrees. It's like 50 degrees. We made it. We're currently walking where the Prophet used to walk. It's called the Sunnah, Sunnah Path. This is it, Allah, my bad. It's really modernized, apparently. All of these are tourist shops, but before, this used to just be all desert. I'm trying to find one of the scarves with the ring around it. Bro, look at the shoes I just bought. What the hell? Bro, the Yeezy sliders and that are giving me blisters, bro. Alhamdulillah. Got to walk for like another 30 minutes. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, if you make wudu and walk to Quba, you get the same, nah, nah, later, later. I'll come later, I'll come later. The Prophet Sallallahu said, if you walk to the Quba, make we don't walk to the Quba, and make intention to pray in the Quba, you get um, the reward of Umrah. Right there. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it, I don't know if you can see it. We're like 20 minutes away. It's the Allah. Bro, we made it. After 40 minutes, 40 minutes in 47 degrees today. Uh, new pair of shoes. Alhamdulillah, we made it. This masjid is beautiful, Allah, my bed. We're definitely getting taxi back though, I don't care. This is where the Prophet used to come every year, Saturday. Madness. It's also the first ever mosque in Islam. So when we go inside, it's gonna look mad. Okay, fun fact time. Basically, Masjid Koba, you could never see this masjid, the one I'm showing in the picture, from any mountain before. And also, the mosque was never white. 
But after the expansion, they made the mosque really big and they also made it white so you could see it from mountains. And subhanAllah, um, in the narration it says the Dajjal is going to stand outside of Mecca from a mountain, point at it and say that is the white palace of Ahmed, subhanAllah. The day of judgment is soon, I'm telling you. It's not as big as I thought it would be. It's still be. They got Zamzam water over there, There's nothing I want to do more than have a nap. This is where the Prophet first ever mosque established. SubhanAllah. Okay, this is just a separate note, but why do people in Saudi drive insane? Like, bro, cats are sunnah, yeah, but you ain't got nine lives. Like, look, 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 this guy in the video is cutting in from the middle lane into this slip road. They don't, they don't, they don't use indicators. They just beat their horn and say, Bismillah, bro, I swear to but anyway, anyway, he was taking us, alhamdulillah, we got there in one piece, but he was taking us to Mount Uhud. Mount Uhud was a madness, like, bro, it was literally the journey to the centre of the earth. Like, it was 51 degrees, number one. Number two, like, it was just this flat, beautiful, beautiful desert landscape. Basically, the story of this mountain was the Prophet wasallam told 50 archers, stay on this mountain and defend us. They didn't listen. And then they lost. After Mount Uhud, we went to this museum which had miniature statues of like the Quba, the Kaaba. It was really cool. Yo, Imran, what's the time? 10.30, my guy. 10.30. The day is 10.30. 20th today, right? Or 19th? 20th, innit? 20th, 20th. The 20th of April. We're packing our stuff. Leaving Medina. How you feeling, Imran? Bro, chat so chat This is definitely the city of peace. Bro, bro this wallahi, bro, that. Like, me leaving this, my heart hurts. Wallahi. Do you know what I mean? Like, you feel like, bro, I'm going to miss the masjid. I'm going to miss the walk. I'm going to miss this hotel. I'll miss everything, my bro. Inshallah, bro. Medina, I'm going to be back, bro. Inshallah. Bro, real talk. If you have the opportunity to come, bro, don't even think twice. Don't think twice. Don't think once. Boom. Book it. That's it. Halas. But yeah. Going to leave to Mecca tomorrow, inshallah, at around, what, 12? Straight after the Duhur at 12 and yeah, we'll see how that is, alhamdulillah. Our train is at 12 p.m. to so midday. Uh, we're probably going to get some breakfast before and yeah, see how it goes. Bro, it's so upsetting. Wallahi, I'm going to miss this place so much. Medina is my favourite city in the world and I know that it will be forever until Allah chooses to take my soul. I'm not to get all like emotional in that, but I'm one of those people whose like thoughts consume them. But in this city of peace, like they all stopped. The amount of peace and tranquility I felt in this city was profound. I was smiling and laughing every second because my body could not contain the amount of joy that I had just from being in Medina. Like the feeling of napping in the mosque, reading Quran in the mosque. Bro, I promise you, random people would literally come up to me and be like, where are you from? I'll be like, East Asia. And they'll be like, are you a river? I'll be like, yeah. And they'll just slap me a oh, gift. Like, we say. We I remember I kept on thinking to, to myself, no like, bro, am I walking where the Prophet walked? Like, what if, like, I'm literally walking in the exact same alignment as the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or, like, I would sit in the mosque and be like, all oh, my days, am I sitting where the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to sit? Like, bro, it was a madness, bro. Even even seeing the Prophet's grave, like it gave me so much goosebumps. Before, behind those four walls, because the Prophet's grave is protected by like four layers. So behind those four walls, it lies the Prophet of Allah. And the, 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 the Prophet that, the human being, the most perfect human being that gave us the most perfect message. I cannot stress this enough, but Allah hears you and so hears you as well. If what you've asked for has not come yet, it is going to come in the future. Or it's going to come in a better form. Trust me on this one. Trust me on this one. I want to give a huge shout out to Dome Tours. If you're looking to go Umrah or Hajj, I would definitely vouch for them. The leader, Abdurrahman, he was amazing. He explains everything and he is so knowledgeable. Ask him any question, he's slapping on you. I took my Shahada on March 8th, 2021, and Allah has blessed me more in these two years than He has in the previous 19 years of my life. Allah is literally the greatest. Like, I could literally cry when I think about how blessed I am that Allah chose to guide me to Islam. Alhamdulillah for Islam. And yeah, make a vlog soon, inshallah.